Trichotillomania. Trichotillomania. Trico till I meet you. Uh, I think it's over when I was 14. Uh, thereabouts. So it seems to be stress is quite a big trigger. And um, mine was my parents separating. And uh, there's a lot of arguments in the family, so I think it was just quite a stressful time for me, so I think that's what started it really. Trick or Telemania? God, um, a theme park that's based around magic, I don't know. <laughs> I would say it's something to do with your big toe. It means, um, if I had to guess, it sounds like you trick someone, you trick someone into bending over. I don't know. It's <laughs> not a clue. Something to do with knitting. It means why you pull out your hair. They pull it out? Yeah. Then why do they pull it out? Well, yeah, I'd, I'd, sit, I'd bring them upstairs and I'd say, like, you know, you know, you've got to stop pulling your hair out. You know what I mean? You can't carry on like this because, you know, you'll be walking about, you'll have a bald head, and everybody will say, look at my bald head, and I'll be laughing and joking. I just think it's awful. Uh, it wasn't that bad, but it kept coming from the, like, one place on the top of my head, and I'd end up with, like, a small tuft. I mean, I, I still got, like, tufts of hair now, but uh, I did then, and people would notice, but back then I didn't really tell many people about it. <laughs> Uh, it wasn't that bad, but it kept coming from the like one place on the top of my head, and I'd end up with like a small tuft. I mean, I, I still got like tufts of hair now, but uh, I did then, and people would notice. But back then, I didn't really tell many people about it. <laughs> I, I am afraid that it will, you know, get worse. Or I mean, I am quite worried at that at the moment how like my hair looking a bit weird because like the partings will be. Uh, wider than they should be, or go in a weird direction because of the hair that's been pulled out. Because <laughs> it's like when you're 14, <laughs> you kind of like worry of how your people will treat you, or kind of just go, oh, that's weird. Whereas now I don't really um, care about it that much. Mm. It's kind of like people, other people's opinions matter less, really. But I mean, it, it is still there. Like if someone points it out, like. Um, Someone asked me last year, they were like, what? why have you got this weird bit of hair of here? Like, asking if I'd cut it that way. I was like, no, it's because I, I pull my hair and it's kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> and another thing that annoys me is, um, like, sometimes if I'm talking to someone, and once I mention it, then it's there. And I see them, like, looking at the top of my head to kind of, like, check out my hair. And that like, kind of annoys me a bit. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's more on a board than anything. I mean, I mean, people say um, stress is a trigger. I think, I think sometimes it is, but I think mostly for me, it's usually just boredom. It's kind of like a parrot stuck in a cage, like plucking out its feathers or something, <laughs> like with nothing else to do. Because <laughs> I, I would, but then it's like if I don't want to do it anymore, I wouldn't want to get enjoyment, which. I do kind of, it's kind of like satisfying to pull one out, like if I find a really thick hair or one that feels weird to me, like rough or has like a bend in it or a kink or something, then I'll want to pull it out, which is very OCD I think, but it has worried me like, you know, make it getting worse and getting ball patches and I haven't wanted it to get fur like further and it has been at times like oh, I don't want to do this anymore, so I'll ask people to try and stop me from doing it if they see me do it. I would call it an OCD very much, so... Because, <laughs> I mean, it's the same way, like, someone might look at their desk and go, oh, I, I can't work until it's tidy, or that's in a certain place, and, oh, that's out of place, and I'll kind of go, oh, no, I, I can't leave this hair here, it just, it just feels wrong. <laughs> so so it's quite similar. Do you think other people who've got the same condition, maybe they classify it differently? Would you say there's, yeah. different, there's different classifications of different... Yeah, different there are quite a few 
different opinions on it. And I mean, I haven't really spoken to that many people who have it. I mean, most of the time, it's really they go kind of you tell them they kind of go, oh, oh. actually, I I do that bit. I didn't realize that was a thing. <laughs> The hairdresser I go to is quite a good friend with my mum, so I think she explained it to her quite well. Yeah. And uh, she was quite, I think she was quite understanding about it actually, because she was saying, well, so how, that you've got a section of hair missing at the back, so you can do this to cover it up or blah blah. There's a condition called trichophagia, mm. where the sufferer chews on the roots and things. Has that ever been a case for you? Uh, I have heard of it before, and I know there have been cases where they've had. They've like eaten so much hair because I, I don't think it, it just kind of stays there and it doesn't go anywhere, so it kind of collects. And I've heard stories about people having like massive hairballs getting cut out of their stomachs or something, but it, I, I've never done that before. Really. So that's never been a habit of yours? No, I, mean, I think the only thing is I might like see a, a split end or something and just kind of go oh, and bite it off, so but I, I won't eat the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's quite disgusting. <laughs> Uh, hopefully if I, I do the methods then I can overcome it because I mean I have managed to sometimes go for a hair and then kind of go no I'll, I'll, I'll stop I'll leave it and I have made an effort sometimes so I think if I like try these methods that I found uh, like ones kind of write down when you're worth like the times you're worse at doing it and things and then one was like breathing exercises or muscle relaxation so I think if I try them maybe I'll get somewhere. Do you, think it's, do you think it's quite a long process to get over it or do you think you'll be able to? Yeah I mean it's like I think like you said with cigarettes I think with cigarettes you kind of got to take your time and you might read up sometimes and <laughs> kind of go for it when you even if you've had a massive break you might kind of want to go back to it. So your urge will always be there do you think? Yeah I think it might do. <laughs> Um, at first I didn't really notice it that much and then I started to just like pick out that she kept playing with her hair and I was just kind of, what are you doing? She's like, I just do it all the time. I was kind of like, stupid. <laughs> I slightly do it. Not like head hair. I do pull out eyebrow hair. <laughs> do you know when you do it? <laughs> when? Uh, subconsciously really. Uh, like when I'm just sort of watching TV or something. When I'm doing something else, basically. She asked me to stop her doing it, so <laughs> I've been trying to stop her doing it. It doesn't always work, though, no, does it? No, I try and sneak one in sometimes when I really want to. Um, well, <laughs> a lot of the time I just kind of tap her and point at her and she'll <laughs> stop doing it. 